beloved agony aunt. She has helped countless callers through the darkest moments of their lives. But for the past few months, Deirdre has been going through a secret battle of her own after being diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, in the hope of encouraging other women to get checked, she's joining us now alongside Dr Nigat to share her story. Morning to both of you. Good morning. Good so morning. we only found out about this at the beginning of last week. Um, you've been living with this since June. Um, and you are, as you are, remarkably stoic. And, uh, and you've w w said there are many other people worse off than me. Uh, let's start, first of all, with that discovery in June, because it started with an ache, didn't I it? I was just achy. So, and I'm really glad I was, actually, because that made me check. I, you know, I phoned my GP's practice. Mm -hmm. They were very efficient. I'm, I, I am going to sing a hymn of praise to the NHS mm. for all of this, because it has, has actually been brilliant. They, they saw me that day, you know, I talked over the phone initially, come in, see us, advanced nurse practitioner, checked me over, said, mm, there may be something there. I was then put on what they call the two-week cancer pathway. That meant I got an appointment. I live a distance from Cambridge to so Addenbrooke's, the big teaching hospital mm -hmm. in Cambridge, the breast unit there. Again, sing their praises, it's been amazing. I was referred for a mammogram, that happened within something like 10 days, you know, so I got, I got that mammogram. I then went on holiday, but they did find at the mammogram, there is something called, I'd never heard of it before in my life, calcification, which can happen in different parts of your body, but it does happen in older women's breasts. Tiny, tiny little microscopic flecks mm -hmm. of, of calcium. But if they're in a cluster, that can be a sign of trouble. And there was a cluster, so they said, you're gonna have to come back for a biopsy. That proved yeah. there was actually cancer in there. OK, so the, the name of the cancer, and can, can you say it, because I, I don't want to pronounce it's it wrong. High, high-grade ductal carcinoma in situ. OK. And that means it's in a duct, you know, like sort of like from when you're milk duct, yeah. really, and it's inside it still. The in situ means it's still inside it. High-grade, though, that's the bad news bit. That means it is the sort that is aggressive and would be likely to spread if it were left to get on with it. But thank God you caught thing. it so early, which is such a brilliant so, thing. I am so, so glad I caught yeah. it really early. And I suppose that the, what I want to say to other people is, you know, I had that mammogram because of this coincidental ache. The ache is nothing to do, probably, you know, with, with, with the carcinoma. And, you know, I'm 77. I happen to be among a group of women, though I think, again, this is coincidence, who got missed for their mammograms when they're about 70. But you're automatic call for mammograms every three years stops when you're 70. Mm. And, I, and I think I got a letter a couple of years later saying, oh, you know, you could ask for a mammogram if you want one. And I looked online and thought, oh, well, they stopped doing them then, you know, it'll be fine. Obviously, I'm too old to need one now. That was a big mistake, you know, yeah. to, to mm. think that. What I want to say to women over 70 is, you've got a right to request a mammogram, so please request it. Yeah. Do you it. know, do it every you've got. You can have a free mammogram every three years. It is so worthwhile. Yeah, and can you explain um, explain the cancer? Yeah. Um, and uh, and also age groups. Ductal carcinoma in situ is an early form of breast cancer, and cancer cells are basically cells that are overgrowing or they are growing erratically. The breast is made up of um, lobules, um, and they are basically the milk glands, and then they have ducts as well. They're the tubes that take the milk to the nipple. And what Deirdre has is basically she's got a carcinoma in situ. That means it's in place in one of those ducts. And then it's graded in different stages. So you get sort of mild, and that just means that there's a few calcifications, as Deirdre was saying. So it's cells that look abnormal, but the rest of the cells within that look pretty normal, like normal breast cells. Then there's intermediate. So cells that look slightly abnormal, but they're growing just at a faster rate than we would like to. And then high grade or invasive ductal cell carcinoma, which is what Deidre <coughs> has been diagnosed with. And what that shows is that there, there are less normal breast cells, more of these abnormal looking breast cells, but they're growing faster. But this is early and if caught early and the treatment <coughs> is early, then the prognosis or the cure of it is, is better. And so the treatment um, begins this weekend. You're going. So I'm in. having a lumpectomy. So they just they they will just take out that little that little bunch of that sort of cluster mm -hmm. and a bit of healthy tissue they hope yeah, around it. Right. Um, and assuming they don't find it spread to the edge of that healthy tissue, mm -hmm. um, that that will I'll, I'll have some radiotherapy later on. But that should be that. Um, and you're, how are you feeling about that? Because I think the thing is, you sort of we talk about 
diagnosis, having cancer, and, and you always think, God, one day, if I hear those words, how I will feel in that moment. And I think until you're faced with it, you don't know how you're going to feel. I think I feel really, really fortunate it's been caught early. Yeah. I feel really lucky that it should just be a lumpectomy. I mean, the, the reality is it could, it could be that they don't get it all out and then I will have, would have to have a mastectomy. But obviously I'm keeping everything mm -hmm. crossed that the lumpectomy does. <coughs> I'm so I'm, sorry. I've no, got right. like stuck in my throat. <laughs> You're I'm right. just going to have a sip on this. You carry on. You, um, <laughs> you, um, you had an auntie. I who, did, who, who, who yeah. had breast cancer. And she died, in, I think it's in her late 80s. Right. So I should have had a family warning in there and to think, oh, you can get cancer later on. Is that you know? a red flag? So we've got to divide that up. Ductal cell carcinoma in situ, the epidemiological study showed that it's not an inherited condition. We do know there are certain <coughs> genetic um, types that can cause an uh, uh, inherited type of breast cancer. So that's your BRCA or if you've got Lynch syndrome. But ductal cell carcinoma, which turns into the invasive type, which Deirdre has, then there is a study that was done at King's College Hospital, which looked at 200,000 markers, genetic markers, and they did find a link that if you've got ductal cell carcinoma, the, the probability that it will turn invasive and you've got a family history as well means that you've got a slight predisposition. But whether that switches on for everybody is really difficult because your aunt was quite old, old, uh, yeah, she old was in a, she was in her late 80s she was in her late yeah. 80s yeah. and so we've got to be clued on so knowing your family history and if you're getting over in your 60s and 70s and you know that there's a family history just be aware of that and tell that to the doctor as well mm -hmm. and um and as as far as um treatment is concerned i mean deidre's got her lumpectomy uh that's coming up and she spotted it um because there was a, 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 an ache, which you're not entirely sure whether don't that think was it's linked. yeah, it could not be yeah. linked. What are you looking for? The first thing is, I'm so glad that Deirdre had a, a mammogram, and I just wanted to come back to that because I think you asked a really good question, saying what age do you have it? Because it could start, so the screening program starts at 50 and then goes up until 70, and then normally seven, up until 74, you can request one. So it's that message that Deirdre's got. Just if you think that you've got a family history, ask for one. What you're looking for, self-examination, is always going to be the best way. And that is going to be every two weeks or so, not at the time of your periods, is that you're looking in the mirror and you're looking for changes in the size of the breasts at all, nipple inversion, skin changes around the breast that you might notice, any thickening of the tissue, having a feel, having a feel underneath the arm armpit as well because you're looking for lumps and that's what you're feeling for any new lumps in the breast and having a feel underneath the clavicle bone as well there are atypical symptoms and in fact unusually I sometimes have picked up breast cancer in the 15 years that I've been a doctor where the symptoms have been completely not even associated so like your backache or a shoulder blade ache or a jaw pain and then I've done a breast examination while the patient's there and I thought oh gosh I can feel a thickening there and sent them off on a two-week wait so knowing your family history doing regular self-examination is really important and even offering up those unusual atypical symptoms to the doctor mm. because sometimes it, they can linger around and then I will call the patient maybe a week later going, actually, do you want to come back? Let me just re-examine you. I mean, we always discuss that being breast aware is so important, yeah. but also awareness of talking about it. And you being here today and discussing this, I know was something you really wanted to I do. I really wanted to do, because I, <coughs> I think people panic at the word cancer often, um, and they can panic, they can be scared of even going to a doctor with their initial worry because they're terrified of getting a diagnosis, mm -hmm. even though getting the diagnosis is what would lead to treatment. You know, we, we, we can be so scared about that word, so I'm really happy to bring it out into the open. Mm. Um, and, we're, as you know, we're going to do our phone-in later about yes, yeah, facing up to I did, did want to say one thing um, to, to both of you. You were talking about this earlier on, and that is the fact that you're, you, you said you were in your 70s. Um, this, is a, this is a stoic generation this is a you know sort of just keep calm and carry on type of thing there will be a lot of people who might just think oh no i don't talk about that sort of thing i might be a little bit embarrassed about it going to see their doctor and you say don't be like that yeah don't be that because the earlier we get it the better prognosis and honestly i've seen and examined and heard all the stories. There's nothing that embarrasses me as a doctor. So that shouldn't be the hurdle that that you do to come to the to the to the GP. And as Deidre was saying, people do get really scared just of that diagnosis. But there is so much that we can do now as we couldn't do many, many years ago. And research and technology has moved on. And I have to say at the breast clinic I've been attending, they have been so 
kind and caring. And when I did have to go through um, um, having the biopsy taken, which is a bit eye-watering, I found one of the nurses was actually holding my hand, uh -huh. you know, already without... They've just been just lovely. Mm. And I just think that makes such a massive difference. And that is very reassuring because it's sure, when you get, when you get there, there are a lot of rather frightened looking women sitting yeah, in that yeah, waiting yeah. room. But then you can see them visibly relaxing. You know, you're given a phone, any worries you've got, ring this number. It's just so reassuring. You feel in such safe hands. Well, we'll be thinking of you lots this weekend, that's for sure. Thank you.